Today, we're making a delicious tri-tip sandwich. Now this is my favorite way to enjoy some leftover tri-tip, and I'm sure you're gonna love it as well. But before we can make the sandwich, we'll have to, well, grill up a tri-tip. I'm doing it on a gas grill today, using the Denali 605 Pro. I'm testing out the infrared ceramic burner, along with the temperature probes that come built in. Let's start by prepping up the tri-tip. I'm using a Santa Maria style seasoning that I got from El Cortez Meat Market here in Downey, California. If you don't have a Santa Maria type seasoning, a simple salt, pepper, and garlic mix will work here. We're gonna season this 3.3 pound select grade tri-tip that I got at my local Kroger. Be sure to season evenly. The tip, the three edges, and both sides. As you can see, I went pretty heavy on it. This is a big piece of meat, so it can handle it. I've had my Denali 605 Pro heating up this entire time as I seasoned it, so it'll be good and ready to drop down on the sear zone. This grill comes with five blade infrared burners. One built in infrared ceramic burner on the inside, which has amazing searing power, and I'm gonna test out. This tri-tip is smelling mighty good, so let's flip to the other side. My goal for this tri-tip is to get a nice sear on all sides and then finish cooking it until it reaches around 120 degrees internal temperature. Don't forget the edges. Now for the edges, you want to hold it up a bit. There's three total edges. It doesn't have to be a perfect sear, just get some color on it. One of the things I see with beginner grillers is they don't take the time to sear the edges of the tri-tip. Even searing all the way around creates a beautiful crust, which means awesome flavor. The sear doesn't have to be perfect, and we'll get more searing as the cook goes on. But once you get both sides and the three edges nicely seared, we'll go ahead and put the tri-tip off to the side. The burner right next to it is set to high, and the burner underneath the tri-tip is set to low. Since there is heat underneath, I'm gonna flip the tri-tip every five minutes or so, so as not to burn it. So you don't overcook the tri-tip, I recommend you place a leave-in thermometer. There are many in the market, but the cool thing about this Denali 605 Pro is that it has a built-in thermometer with real-time temperature display on one of the side tables. The grill also comes with two meat probes. I connected one of them to the unit, and I probed the tri-tip so I can monitor internal temperatures. It's been about 30 minutes total cooking time, so let's check on the tri-tip. I ended up flipping this tri-tip four times. And on my last flip, I ended up turning off the burner right below the tri-tip because I liked how it looked already. I'm hitting 130 on the thicker end. So let's confirm internal temperatures with an instant read and we're ready to pull off. I'm gonna wrap in some butcher paper then a vacuum sealer bag. And I'm gonna seal it. With tri-tip, you'll want to enjoy it like a steak and get it down to a medium rare temperature. But since I don't plan to eat this tri-tip today, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nice bath and put it in the fridge. Giving it a nice bath is also gonna stop any carryover heat and it's gonna prevent your tri-tip from cooking any further. While it cools down, I'm gonna wipe down my grates with some balled up aluminum foil. Be sure to knock off any hard bits while the grill is nice and hot. Turn off all the burners. Spray with oil, and your grill is ready to rock for the next time. Now that the tri-tip took a nice cold bath, the temperature on this tri-tip cooled down enough to place in the fridge for tomorrow. The next day, I'm gonna remove from the bag and the butcher paper. Ooh, it looks awesome, and it smells really good. Let's slice this tri-tip using a deli slicer. Be careful when slicing and use the blade guard when you get closer to the blade. You don't want to ruin a perfect tri-tip by mixing in one of your fingers. So please, be very, very careful. Here's how I like the thickness of the slices. I can now enjoy these tri-tip slices any way I want, but I want to build a sandwich. Have these torta rolls to build up this tri-tip sandwich. First, I'm gonna lay down some compound butter. Let it melt slightly on the grill. And once it softens, I'll go ahead and give it a nice spread. Mm. 
Once it melts nicely, I'll give these breads a gentle toast on the hot side. Be very careful not to burn anything. All it needs is a few seconds. Let's drop in our beautifully sliced tri-tip. Add in as much as you want here. I'm also placing some Oaxaca cheese at the top. Place on the grill for the cheese to melt. Yes, having it heat up to melt the cheese, it's gonna slightly overcook the edges, but it's expected. But the center pieces will be nice and medium. Now for faster melts, you might want to use an aluminum lid of some sort and cover it. Once it melts, let's remove. And I'm gonna drop in some barbecue sauce. If you're curious, this is some hickory barbecue sauce made by Kinders. I haven't dropped barbecue sauce on my tri-tip in such a long time, but I think this sandwich really called for it. Now, if you do use barbecue sauce, I advise you put the sauce at the same time you put the cheese on so it heats up a little. Let's slice the sandwich. As you can see, it's a nice medium. And now let's give it a taste. Let's eat. <laughs> wow. Now I'm not a fan of using barbecue sauce on a tri-tip sandwich, but this was outstanding. And now you know how to make a tri-tip sandwich with leftover tri-tip. Try this, it's fantastic. Now, if you wanna learn how to cook tri-tip on other cookers, then be sure to check out this link above and I'll show you how to do it.